Hey, James Kingsley here. Just want to walk you through uh, how I built the demo that, uh, for the Emphasize Elements blog post over on elearnbrothers.com. Uh, and so if you haven't read the post yet, you probably want to jump over there and read it. But basically what we're talking about here is using JavaScript to create an emphasis animation on an object on the slide. So in other words, to make it grow or shrink or to make it spin or bounce, that type of thing. Uh, so in this example, what I want the learner to do is to come in here and click on all the guinea pigs and on all the cats. To help them out, I give them a button so that they can get a, a hint. Um, and that's when I want to apply that emphasis animation on there. So uh, here's our base layer. And we can see here I have uh, all my cats are in here. And I have uh, states set up on those there. Uh, the key thing here um, is I've added in the accessibility, that's a cat, uh, select that one, that's a cat, select this one, that's a cat. So all of these uh, items have the same alternate text tab, tab, ugh, same alternate text uh, for, for the element. And that means that when I use my jQuery selector to find the elements, it'll, it'll find all the elements that have cat on them. So then, um, of course, the demo always gets more complicated than I need it to be. I'm trying to demonstrate the JavaScript, but I decided to make an interaction out of it, and that, that created more uh, complexity. So the first thing I have up is the instructions. Um, and I didn't want people to, to start clicking cats and pigs right away. So I just put a hot box on top of it to, uh, to prevent them from clicking through uh, to the base layer there. And then um, they go on to the pig layer. And again, I didn't want them to start clicking cats yet. So I uh, just put these hot spots on top of the cats to, to catch any tricks. There's, there's, there's a lot of other ways I could have handled that. Um, this is just the, the simplest way that I, I did it out of the box there. Um, and then the hint, and that's what we're all here to see, is the, the JavaScript on that. So the hint on this one, uh, they're trying to find the guinea pigs, so let's see what we do here. When they click that, we actually find um, all, all the pigs. So I'm looking for a label pig, and here I find, I select all the elements that have the label pig, and I select their child SVG. And then I go through a little bit of code here um, to basically what I'm doing is uh, there's not a jQuery animation for rotate. So I'm using uh, a step function that will uh, step through each time and uh, over, over duration of two seconds and rotate each one of those pigs there. So that's what I'm doing on that one. And then once they found all the pigs, uh, they go on and they start looking for cats. And again, I didn't want them to click pigs at this point, so I just covered them with those. And the hint function on this one, it's going to call some JavaScript. And this one, I'm just growing and shrinking the cats. So when you click on that, I select all the elements that have the cat aria label. And then I expand their width and their height, and I move them. Um, and you'll notice that the width, like I'm expanding at 20, and then I'm moving at 10 to the, to the left there. And that's because the by default, like the anchor point for our element is in the, uh, the upper left corner. And so if we just change the width and height, it would grow from that up, upper left corner. I want to create the uh, visual effect that it's growing from the center. So therefore, as I grow it larger, I'm also moving it over too. And then uh, as soon as that function is over, and that's where this comma is here, as soon as that function is over, then we run uh, the almost identical function uh, in the reverse to shrink it back down to the original size and move it back over to where it originally was there. Um, you might also notice, and this is just a little bonus for you there, uh, you might also notice that I have a counter that's running in here. And the way I'm doing that counter, um, I have a whole other blog post on counters, um, but the, the other way I'm doing it here is I'm using these two um, circles, and they're animated. They have a uh, 
a timeline, not a timeline, sorry, a uh, motion path animation on them. And so basically, I'm tog toggling them back and forth. And so I say that um, as soon as this timer is done, I want you to move the other timer. And then on that timer, I say, as soon as you're done, I want you to move the first timer. And so they're going back and forth, uh, triggering each other to move. And each time one of them moves, I add one to the counter. So the, the duration of the animation is one second long, so I know that it's going to fire every second. I'm going to be adding one to, to my counter there. So that's uh, how I built it. Oh, uh, the reset, sorry, one more thing. To reset all this, the simplest way that, that I did it was I've got this slide set to reset the whole slide. And then um, at the top, once you've found everything and I have the start over, it actually just jumps you to the next slide where I have this little one second animation. And then when this slide is done, I have a trigger to jump you right back over to that slide. So really all I'm doing is having you jump from one slide back to the other slide there so that it will reset the whole interaction. So that's it. Um, come on over to elearnbrothers.com and check out the blog post. Uh, pick up uh, more of these types of tips there. Thank you.